Alright, we're starting off this fight by using our combo on the Kakulkan. I'm pretty sure we missed our one here, but we should be able to kill her with a drop and some auto attacks here. Uh, who is that? Kuzumbo decided to join. I don't know if we can kill Kuzumbo. I don't really want to waste too many resources, but the circuit is kind of trying to gank our back line. Not the best idea considering there are four of us grouped up. I'll use my combo on the Hercules to try to get him away uh, from the fight that's happening. I'll ult the enemy circuit for some damage. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my 3 to reposition a bit because I found myself in between uh, a couple of people here. And I'm just waiting for my cooldowns. I'm going to go ahead and back up a bit under tower because I don't want to have to deal with the circuit without any abilities up. Uh, but now that I have my abilities up, I can go ahead and re-engage on the circuit and we will be able to get that kill. Uh, moving on, we have the Izanami here that I'm going to use my combo on. And you can see just how much damage this combo actually does. Uh, I'm going to use my 3 to avoid the damage from the boulder on the Hercules, and now it's just come down to chasing these people down. Uh, it might take a bit, and I don't really feel like walking into that tornado, uh, but look at this. They're all going to be stuck close quarter in this little corner. I'll hit my 2, I'll hit my 1, and we'll be able to kill them both. Very nice. Hello, hope you're doing well. Today we're playing some Yu Huang, and I'm super excited to bring you this Yu Huang gameplay for one specific reason. And that is that I truly do believe Yu Huang to be probably one of the easiest and best mages to play ranked matches with and win. Uh, this character overall brings quite a lot to the table, uh, a decent amount of damage, an insane amount of CC, uh, and some good safety as well. All ingredients that make for a very very good mage to play your ranked matches with and win them if you learn how to play him. Uh, there are some intricacies I can't talk to his kit. Uh, and I would like to actually go over in this video how to play him efficiently uh, so that you can start winning your ranked matches because truly, like I mentioned earlier, I do believe this is probably one of the best characters to grind your ranked matches with if you're playing mid lane. Uh, so without further ado, in this video we're going to go over a couple of things. First of all, we'll go over the abilities for those of you who haven't played Yu Huang or don't know what he does. Um, furthermore, we'll go over some tips and tricks with the abilities. Uh, and then we'll go over a build that you can use as well. So with that being said, my Discord server is down in the description, and so is my Twitch if you want to follow me on there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with Yu Huang's passive. Uh, so Yu Huang's passive is Master of the Dao. Uh, basically, Dao are these stacks that you see on the uh, bottom left of the screen. Uh, where Whenever they glow uh, green, you're, that's how many stacks you have. You can get up to 12. Uh, when you have over six stacks, you either augment your auto attacks and then also some of your abilities. So starting off with the auto attack, uh, you can see here, whenever I auto attack one thing, it's actually going to bounce off of that one thing and hit another thing right next to it, right? So if I were to auto attack when I have over six of these passive stacks, it's almost as if I have two auto attacks hitting, you know, my main target and then bouncing off of that target onto the next. Uh, so very, very nice there. Um, moving on, it does augment your abilities to have over 6 stacks of your DAO, right? Of your passive stacks. Uh, so we'll go over each of the augments when we're going over the abilities. First off, your second ability. This is the one that I personally like to level first. But I would like to let you guys know that truly, leveling this or the second ability are both very viable. Uh, it just depends on your playstyle. Um, I'll go over the abilities and I'll talk a bit more about this subject here in a second. Uh, but just know, if you like to level the two, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the first ability is very simple. It's a circle ability, a circle, uh, you know, ability at your target location. And you can see me use it there. What it does is think about it as an X, four lines in an X kind of uh, shape where you know, these four line attacks kind of shoot projectiles, and once they intersect in the middle, they kind of cause an explosion, and that's the big circular damage. Uh, so again, you can do damage with these little four line attacks, but it's not really that much damage from the four line attacks. The big damage is from the actual explosion that happens in the middle once they all intersect. Uh, and this is going to do a couple of things. First of all, uh, you'll do damage from the, again, line attacks, you'll do damage from the explosion, and then also, if people continue to stand in it, it is going to stay burning for a couple of seconds after you use this ability, 
then it's going to do damage over time to whoever's still standing in it at the time. You can see here the flames kind of reside uh, for a bit after I have used it. Very simple ability, very good for poking. Uh, but like I mentioned, whenever you have six passive stacks, your abilities gain an extra effect. Well, what does this ability gain? Uh, put simply, you're going to reduce the enemy's protections when you hit them with this. How much? Well, it depends on how uh, you know high of a level this ability is at. Uh, and it is flat penetration for those of you who are wondering. Um, now, with that being said, moving on to the second ability, Dao Cultivation. Uh, this ability does not only a decent amount of damage, uh, it gives you some form of CC in the form of a root, but also it does something else for you Hoing's kit. So starting off, uh, you're going to start kind of channeling this line attack. Any time after beginning to channel the line attack, you can choose when to actually release it. You saw me use it there to actually shoot the line attack out, or you can choose not to do so at all by canceling the ability. Uh, when you do decide to shoot this ability, um, it's going to do a couple of things. First of all, two forms of damage. One initial blast of the laser coming out of your, you know, you shooting out your laser. And then after, just very, very quickly, after you shoot out the initial laser, it's actually going to explode doing a second portion of damage. You saw me use it there once again. The first uh, kind of beam, uh, the first damage portion of this ability is just going to do damage. Once that beam of light explodes, that's when you're going to do, again, more damage and root people. So again, this is actually going to give you access to CC in the form of a root. Furthermore, it's also going to slow people. Uh, like, the first shot is going to slow the enemy team, and the second explosion is going to root them in place. So you get two forms of CC in one. Um, now, with this being said, it also does another thing for you. And you you heard me in the start of this video mention that you can just kind of hold it forever in this kind of state of channeling it uh, without actually using it as we're able to possibly kill this mid laner, uh, especially considering she has no beads. Uh, you can kind of hold it. While you are holding it, you are actually gaining Dao. Again, this is stacks of your passive. And then when you actually shoot it out, that's when you gain your Dao. You can gain to up to a max of six. So with using this ability, you're going to be able to build your passive, uh, you know, stacks uh, from your passive. Uh, other than this ability, that's the only real way to get it. You can just get it by waiting. Every couple of seconds, you're going to gain one stack, but that takes quite a long time. So this is the only reason you're rapidly, the only way you're rapidly going to gain this uh, passive stack. Uh, moving on to your second ability. Uh, you're actually going to become CC immune and untargetable and go up in the air. Uh, while up here, you can kind of choose to just fall down. You're going to fall down back to earth uh, pretty slowly. But if you were to actually press the button again, you're going to speed up your descent back to the ground. Uh, this is important because it allows you to kind of be less predictable when you're actually going to land. Because depending on when you press the ability again or if you don't press it at all, then tr throughout the match, you can choose to basically land uh, at different times every single time. The duration of this ability is completely controlled by you, depending on when and if you decide to descent slower or faster uh, by pressing or not pressing this ability as we're able to kill the mid laner again. So kind of a bit of an interesting ability, uh, but when you do land, it's going to do damage in a circular area directly under you. The cool thing is if you have over six stacks of your passive, again, augmenting this ability, uh, if you have six stacks of your passive and you use this, you're actually going to knock everyone in that small circular area up as well, which is very, very important. Uh, moving on to the ultimate, this is why you're playing Yu Huang. This ultimate is probably one of, if not the best ultimate for a mage. Uh, it offers CC, damage, and also some form of safety slash peel. Uh, so with this, this one's going to be a bit harder to explain. Um, put simply, whenever you press this ability, a couple of things are going to happen. One, you're going to become CC immune. Uh, and then two, one dragon is going to spawn above your head and the other dragon is going to spawn directly in front of you looking towards you, if that makes sense. So just imagine making a complete straight line 
the minute you cast this ability depending on where you are looking right again one dragon on you one dragon directly in front of you looking towards you with this you're going to get to choose where the dragons intersect when you use this ability when you press you know your mouse button if you're on pc the two dragons will actually be uh, sent hurtling towards each other flying towards each other and they will collide in the middle creating an explosion uh, so again this is two forms of damage one from the enemy getting hit by the dragons on their way to intersecting with each other and then once they intersect they will explode doing another chunk of damage the cool thing is uh, and you saw me use the dragons there if you they get hit by the dragon that's not on you the one that's opposite you know away from you they're going to get pulled towards the middle if they are hit by the one that's you know above you they are going to get pushed away from you and dragged towards the middle either way no matter what dragon they get hit by they're going to end up in the middle uh, but you can use it to again either pull people towards you or push people away from you depending on where you cast it how close they are to you and which dragon you decide to hit them with uh, right the cool thing is you can change what this dragon intersects uh, and kind of at what angle it happens depending on where you move the dragon away from you is always going to be in the same place but depending on where you are and where you move you can cho change where your dragon is and how they will intersect it's something that you're just going to have to use uh, and learn how to use to be honest uh, it's a bit hard to explain but once you start using it you'll kind of get the hang of it uh, the cool thing about this ability too is if you have six dao uh, again six marks of your passive then the width the actual length uh, or not the width the thickness the width of this ability of the both dragons that are, are flying towards each other is going to increase by quite a significant amount making it a bit easier for you to hit your uh you know the ability here you can see what it kind of is you can see where the other dragon spawned i will not lie that for some reason it glitched out there the ability didn't work properly i've never seen it do that before uh, but it kind of gave you an idea of when you press this ability what is going to happen you're going to have the enemy dragon or the other dragon which you saw away from you the dragon above you and they're going to collide in the middle i don't know why that ability didn't work uh it usually doesn't happen uh just i guess a, a weird little bug um but just gives you an idea of how it works all right so now that you know how these abilities work uh you can kind of tell this character has cc has damage is very very safe all things considered, very, very strong character for you guys to start using in ranked. Uh, but if you were to start using him, what build would you go, you might be wondering? Uh, well, let's go ahead and talk about the builds here. The one thing that I do heavily, heavily recommend with this character is that you get full cooldown reduction. This character relies heavily on CC and spamming his damaging abilities. Uh, so you want to have full cooldown reduction. The more you can use your two and root people, the better. The more you can use your two to gain more uh, passive stacks so that your other abilities get aug augmented the better and then obviously the more times you can alt specifically uh, the better because this ultimate is extremely powerful if used correctly um so with that being said talking about cooldown reduction sands of time is our very best option uh, for one thing sands of time gives you cooldown reduction uh but also the upgrade pendulum gives you not only 20 cooldown reduction but also 190 power that's an immense amount of power actually the most power that you can gain from a magical uh, item uh, with it having this much power and also 20 cooldown reduction it really doesn't give you any other choice for another starter item this is probably the very best uh, as we're able to kill this mid laner so very very important for this item uh, moving on we want to get uh, Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation does a couple of things. One, it gives us a decent amount of power. Uh, two, it gives us cooldown reduction. Again, further ensuring that we hit our goal of getting to max cooldown reduction. And then thirdly, uh, you're actually able to... Excuse me, I had to yawn. <laughs> it's a bit late at night. Uh, you're actually going to be getting some flat penetration. The important part about flat penetration in the early game as your first item is that the enemy mid laner the enemy assassin and the enemy adc the three people that you're going to be focusing on in the early to mid game don't have or don't build protections only working with base protections uh, so being able to get rid of these base protections in the early game completely allows you to do an immense amount of damage 
So flat penetration in the early game is very powerful. Uh, so in this continuing trend, we go into Divine Ruin. Uh, Divine Ruin gives us some power and again continues this flat penetration earlier on, meaning we're doing just an immense amount of damage in the early game. Uh, after that, it also gives us some anti-heal, which we're going to need up against the Hercules and the Izanami. Uh, so very, very important. If they do have any type of healing, Divine Ruin is always the answer. Moving on away from that, I like Soul Gem. Uh, Soul Gem does a couple of things. One, it gives this character sustain. It literally just allows you to do a bit of everything. You do a lot of damage, you do a lot of CC, you're a very safe character, and now you have some sustain as well. Uh, it's just overall very, very good. Uh, it also gives you some percent pen, or not percent pen, sorry. It gives you some burst damage from the passive, some healing from the passive, but also it maxes out your cooldown reduction. You are now at 40 cooldown reduction, which means you're using abilities very, very often. And if you're using abilities often, then you're constantly getting this uh, healing and this extra bonus damage from the passive of this item, making it very, very powerful. Uh, now, moving on. Uh, all of these items are cool and all, you have some decent amount of damage, some uh, flat penetration, but you're going to have a little bit of problem uh, fighting these tankier characters. Uh, this is where Soul Reaver comes in. Soul Reaver, what this item does, is it gives you bonus damage depending on how much health the enemy has. So the more health they have, the more bonus damage this is going to deal. The cool thing about this in particular is that um, because you have so much cooldown reduction, and you're constantly using abilities you can actually apply this damage very very often and very very consistently uh, the issue becomes that the tankier characters don't only build health they also build protections um, and in that regard this damage is actually affected by protection so you're going to need some percent penetration to help you deal with the tankier targets so finish off your build with obsidian shard or charon's coin uh, if they have less tanks to worry about, then a Rod of Tahuti is fine as well. But with that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. And my Discord is down in the description. If you want to play or chat with me, or if you just need someone to play Smite with, we have a lot of people in this server. Uh, so please go ahead and click that link down in the description. Join up and we can play some Smite matches. Uh, moving on, I also do have my Twitch in the description below. If you want to follow me on Twitch, you can get a different kind of experience through live gameplay. Uh, and you guys get to kind of see when I'm playing my ranked matches. You guys get to see what I'm doing and I'll explain to you guys why I'm doing it and how it's beneficial to our team. And I feel like that's another uh, kind of experience for you guys uh, to improve. Uh, but overall, this video is coming to an end here in a second. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for other videos like this. Uh, all of my videos follow a very similar kind of, uh, what's the word, way of being where, you know, they're kind of guide videos. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.